Hey everybody, Jimmy here. Getting ready to film an episode of Taking Trades. Just grabbing some coffee. Gonna take you into the studio back here and we're gonna talk about the small account challenge. We had kind of an interesting week. There were some ups, some downs. Um, a couple things were a little crazy. I wanna get into that and show you exactly what was going on. Gonna show you the profits, everything that's going on the channel up to date, the percent gain, and we'll kind of go from there. But um, just wanted to bring you in and uh, take a peek here so all right we're all set up we're looking good let's get the camera just right there it is all right got the curtain yeah so i want to talk about the small account challenge because we have some positions that are up some positions that are down the account overall the pnl year to date is now in the red so i want to talk about why that happened i've made a few adjustments to a couple of the iron condors options positions and I want to talk about why I made those changes and how that affected the overall position. We're going to look at the options chain. We're also going to take a look at the chart for a quick second and then I'm going to show you the curve which is really nice to look at the options position because it shows you it laid out and it shows you what the expected move is and it kind of just shows you exactly on that bar where we are in terms of price. So I wanna get into that today. We'll break it all down and if you have questions, just drop them in the comments. Let's go. I'm super excited to talk about this today. So I've got the Tastyworks platform open right here. And if you want to open a Tastyworks account, you can help out the channel by getting us a referral credit by clicking the link in the description, opening a Tastyworks account, and then funding it with $2,000. That'll really help the channel out, and we really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Now, if we turn to our account, you can see we've got our five positions on right here. And I want to break them all down and talk about what happened this week. Right now, our current balance in the account is $3,587.74. We started with $3,000 um, a few weeks back, and we're up $587.74. So pretty good growth so far. Um, we're doing better than 17% right now. And I want to go ahead and just talk about each of these positions. I'm going to open them up. We're going to talk about what they are. So the first thing I want to start with is CGC, and that's Canopy Growth Corp. And if I open it up in the Tastyworks platform, you can see here and here, these are the two legs of what I sold, which was a put spread. So this is a bullish strategy where I sell a put at $18, and I buy a put at $16 for protection. Now, if I come over and I go to trade and we look at this curve, you can see it right here. And this is kind of a nice schematic. I like this because this brown bar, this is the expected move of canopy growth. And you can see here, minus one P means I sold a put. Positive one P means I bought the put. So my risk on this trade is from between $18 and $16. If the price goes below this marker right here, that means I'm in the money and I'm at risk for getting assigned, meaning someone has the opportunity but not the obligation to sell me shares at $18. Now, if the stock were to drop below 16, I'm protected on the downside by this put. Anything below 16, I'll make money on the put that I bought and lose money on the put that I sold, so overall they'll cancel each other out. So below 16, I have no risk, but from 16 to 18, that's where my risk is. Right now it's trading at $19.18, so we're looking good, but you can see that the expected move is just below 17, so it's below my put. If it gets there, I, you know, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So on CGC, the way I'm gonna manage this trade, and I kinda take a tasty trade approach to this, I'm going to manage this when we get to 21 days to expiration, which is right here. DTE is days to expiration. So when we get to 21 days, I'm going to make a decision on whether or not I want to roll this position and collect a credit. Or if my sentiment has changed and I'm not really into the stock, I can just close it and take the loss and move on. Or the small gain. I'll make that. It could still be a small gain. Now, we're not in the money, so everything looks good. And I will close this position if I get profits between 50 and 55%. That's where I like to take them off. And you can see if I have these two legs highlighted, if I right-click, I can choose to close profit at whatever percentage I want. 
That's something I really like about Tastyworks. I could go to 55%, click this button, and then put out an order. If it gets to 55% profit and I'm not trading, I'm off doing something else, it'll execute for me. So makes it really, really smooth. So right now, that's our CGC position. It's uh, P&L up. We're up $5 on that one right now. So we'll wait and kind of see how that one plays out. The next one, FedEx. I was super excited about this one, and I'll show you why. If I go to my chart, you can see here that FedEx got really beat up. It had a gap down that was pretty crazy and then sold off for an entire day on December 18th. So after selling off on the 19th, I was interested in this and I decided to go ahead and put on an iron condor. The IV rank was decent in the low 30s and so I decided to go ahead and sell some premium. An iron condor is selling a put spread below the price and, set up and selling a call spread above the price. So I went ahead and did that, and if I look at the position here, this is a little confusing because I rolled the position and it's got some extra markers in here. So I'm actually gonna go to the curve again. So you can see that I have a call that I bought up here. I sold a call here, so my risk is from 155 to 160. And then below it, I sold a put here and I bought a put here. The expected move is the brown bar from 145 to 160. Our price is at 152.50. And the reason I'm excited about this right now is FedEx was pushing up and starting to challenge this upside. And I went ahead and adjusted FedEx and rolled these up. These used to be further out of the money and I rolled up for a credit. So if we come back to our positions, you can actually see that these two that say zero and zero, that was the old position. So I was at 138 for the put that I bought, and I was at 143 for the put that I sold. And I went ahead and I moved the position, and now the put that I bought is at 142, and the put that I sold is at 147. So currently, I think after today's trading day, this and this will disappear. And actually, I think I can, there we go. I got rid of it. So let me do this, nice little filter option there. Um, yeah, I'll remove the closed. So now you can see the true position. So 155, 160, that's the call spread that I sold. And 147, 142, that's the put spread that I sold. So ideally on this iron condor, I want the price to stay between 147 and 155. And you can see we've got 35 days to expiration. And what I'll do is I'll manage it at 21 days. When we get to 21 days, I'll either roll it out or close it. And if I like the profit and we get to 50% or 55% in that window, I'll go ahead and take the position off. And again, I can do the same thing. I can highlight all four legs and I can click in here and I can close profit at wherever I like. So I'll be probably activating one of those orders fairly soon if we get to that point. So that's our position on FedEx. I'm still, um, if we come over to the chart, um, I'm sort of indifferent on it. It got dumped. I think it could have a little bit of a bounce. It could go lower. I'm not sure, but I just kind of want to see it stay between those two ranges and just using probabilities of options to leverage in my favor. So that is our position on FedEx. And since my last episode, I've adjusted this one twice. I rolled up the put side once, and then this was my second roll to the upside. So each time I do that, I'm collecting a credit, and that's causing our cash balance to grow a little bit. So up to 3587.74. So let's close up FedEx, and let's jump over to Roku. So Roku was a little disappointing today. Um, Roku is a put spread that I sold, a 125 by 120, meaning I sold the 125, and I bought the 120 put, and it's been open 10 days. We've got 35 days to expiration, and overall right now on this, we're still up 18.5% and up about $30 on it, but ideally, I want Roku to take off to the upside. I want it to rocket ship to the moon because that will make the closing portion cheaper and allow me to close this out for that 50% profit, but right now, we're currently up about 19% and let me highlight these legs. Let me show you the curve on this one. So here's our risk from 125 to 120. 
It's currently trading just under 140. I want to see it rip up here. I want it to go 150, 155. I want it to go to the moon, and that will allow me to close the position early. So back to our positions tab. Let's close that one up. Let's talk about UNG. UNG is, uh, we're currently up 12.1% on that one. This one is another put spread. I went ahead and sold the 1650 put, and I bought the 1550 put. And if we look at the curve on this one, you can see the expected move of that brown bar. And you can see we're trading at 1733, and our put strike that we sold is right about 1650. So we're out of the money. Things are safe right now. We're kind of in the middle, just hanging out, not doing a whole lot. I'd like to see a move hard to the upside. That would allow me to close this. So if we happen to catch a pop, maybe early next week, I'll go ahead and, and probably close that one out. Again, if we get 50% profit, that's where I want to take it off. Right now, we're up 9.1% on it. And then we come to our problem child, United States Steel. So this is an iron condor, and I've adjusted this one. This one has been dropping a little bit. You can see I've got the put spread here. It's a dollar wide put spread. And then I have a dollar wide call spread on the upside. So my risk on this is the $1 wide. And this 13 by 14 up here, I rolled this one down and that allowed me to collect a small credit and move closer to the price of the underlying. Previous, it was out a little further. Let me put the closed. Okay, it didn't add it back in there. Um, it was a little higher. We had a 14 by 15, and I rolled it down to 13 by 14, collected the credit, and then I'm keeping track of those credits in a spreadsheet so I know exactly how much profit I have on the trade. And then once we get to 21 days, so we've got one week on this one. So next Friday, I'll be looking at this trade to either roll ahead and collect a credit, or I'll be looking to close it and just get out. And we'll see where we are at that point. But right now, we are in the money. And when I say in the money, all I mean is, if we look at the trade tab, sorry about that. All I mean by that is that the current price has breached my strike and is closer to $11. So $11.50 is the strike. The price is $11.12. So right now I am at risk of being assigned on United States Steel. Anytime you're below your strike, you are at risk on a put spread. And I do have protection below $10.50. And it's a really tight iron condor. It's just a dollar wide. And I'm kind of learning that I don't necessarily like really tight uh, wings on the iron condors because it doesn't give you as much opportunity to play with things. It's, it's a little more difficult to manage. So right now we're doing okay. I've collected credit to where I've claimed most of the $1 gap. So my hope is that if this continues to be a problem child and continues to go against me, I'm hoping that at worst case scenario that I can just make this trade a scratch, a break even, and then get out and close it. Every now and then you get a problem child and you got to massage it a little bit. You got to kind of figure out what you're going to do with it to make it work. And in this case, I just want to keep collecting credit so that I can close the gap on my $1 wide wings, which is my current risk on this. So um, overall, things are looking pretty good. The thing I'm most excited about right now is FedEx um, was up a little more and now it's back down. I thought it was going to push up higher and I didn't want it to. I wanted it to kind of sag back down a little and it decided to go ahead and do that. So that took a little pressure off of the call side of my iron condor on FedEx. But you can see we're down 34% right now on that one. And then United States Steel, we're down 57.6% on that position. But next Friday, we'll take some action on US Steel. I will bring that to you live. I'll film everything. I'm going to be completely transparent with this account. I want everyone to know what's going on. I want to keep showing you my cash balance on this so you know exactly what my gains are. And there's the closing bell. So $3,587.74 is the current value of the small account challenge. We've grown by $587 already. We're going to wait and see how these positions work out. As we take these positions off, that balance for cash will change a little bit. We'll see where we settle out, and then we'll move forward and put on more positions. So if you have questions, drop them below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you want to check me out on Instagram, 
go ahead and head on over here. We just fired up an Instagram account and come follow us, come interact with us there. Really would appreciate that. And at the least, if you like the video, hit that like button. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>